Hi everyone, my name is Michaela and I'm the membership associate here at BEMA. For today's interview, we have Margie McDonald, one of many extremely talented artists we have exhibited in our Fiverr 2020 show. Um, some of you might be familiar with Margie's work. She was previously exhibited at BEMA and we are just so excited to have her work back in the museum. My name is Margie McDonald. I live in Port Townsend, Washington. I'm originally from Newfoundland and Labrador. I make sculpture using wire and textile techniques. I incorporate a lot of found objects as well. My background is in textiles. I have a degree in fine art from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, where I always focused on textiles. This is what a wire splice looks like. This is 19 strands of stainless steel wire that are woven back into itself to make a super strong eye on the end of a wire that would go on a boat. And this is the tool that it's made with, a simple spike and a vise to hold it in place, of course. When I learned how to splice stainless steel wire, that kind of, that was what got me down the path I am on now with working with wire as my main material. I have four sculptures in the Fiber 2020 show at the Bainbridge Island Art Museum, and they're all woven, crocheted, and wrapped, and they're all wire. How does your work in Fiber 2020 differ from your previously exhibited work at BEMA? My very first time at the Bainbridge Island Art Museum was in 2008 when the museum was still under construction. Greg Robinson gave me a tour. He brought me up to the Beacon Gallery. And it really wasn't until that point that I realized I was to have the entire Beacon Gallery to myself for this inaugural exhibition. I fill the gallery with many, many sculptures ranging in size from a couple of inches to almost a couple of hundred inches. I had sculptures hanging from the ceiling and the walls and down the front two-story windows. The experience of being at the museum while people were ascending the staircase into my show called Seascape was Absolutely one of the best experiences I've ever had. What made you stick with being an artist? I stick with being an artist because at this point, I just can't imagine anything else. I can't imagine ever again looking at a spool of wire and not getting excited about the possibilities of what could happen or stopping in a scrapyard and seeing all those wonderful, crazy shapes that could just turn into something else entirely. So being an artist is just who I am at this point. What's the best place that you've ever been? One of the most interesting places I've been was during a rigging job where we were putting safety lines on all the chandeliers in the Capitol building in Olympia. And not only did we get to work 
alongside these nine inch chain links that held this amazing chandelier. We got to be right there with the chandelier and we got to go up into the actual ceiling where this giant chandelier hangs from the point in the top of the ceiling and we walked around between the ceiling dome and the exterior dome to go out into a little balcony and have a look over Olympia. It was just amazing. It's not a place that a lot of folks have been and it just, it was a lot of fun to be there. It was very interesting. This was after the Nisqually quake and all of the walls in the entire Capitol building were covered in press board. It was a very interesting environment. Tell us about any particular techniques that you use. The techniques I use are the skills I gained as a kid with knitting, crocheting, sewing, embroidery, and the skills I gained in um, college with weaving and the skills I gained at the rigging shop. In the rigging shop, you're making all of the wires on a boat that are precisely measured. Everything was very precise. Everything was measured a couple of times. Um, th this is very important to have precise measurements and in the evening I liked not worrying about any precise measurements any precise way of doing anything and I just started playing with the wire and that's what brought me to what I'm doing now so I'm just kind of weaving this wire I'm not sure what this is going to be but this is a thing I've been doing recently and my pieces in fiber 2020 were built like this, where I start weaving what essentially becomes the base fabric. And once this is thick enough so that it can hold its shape, I'll take it off the frame and manipulate it into some kind of shape. I don't know what that will be yet. I also have found a way of making very sturdy um, shapes um, by wrapping wire around a knitting needle and making coils. And this is a piece from a wearable art uh, piece that I made some years ago that went to the uh, wearable art show in New Zealand. And this is just all copper wire. It's very firm. It's a lovely way to make things. And a recent, a recent um, way that I use that same method to make this uterus, um, I made the basic shape with this coil method. And then I kind of used a uh, needlework method where I sewed over and over with the copper wire to completely make a, a layer of um, glass beads on the top. Now this uterus has a extra special feature as you'll see. These pointy little corners come from uh, my favorite scrapyard in Walla Walla, Washington. And they are actually corner cutouts left over from the license plate manufacturer. Very sharp, I quite like them. And I also, I like working with wood a lot. Kind of drawing on something I liked to do as a kid, which was pound nails into wood. And this is where I get to pound as many nails as I like and whatever else I can find. And I use wood for this kind of thing. These are cutoffs. My husband's a shipwright and he brings home some interesting shaped woods that sometimes meant for the fireplace, but I, pull out the very interesting shapes. The pieces I have in Fiber 2020 are woven, crocheted, 
and wrapped. Well, thank you so much to Margie for this very thoughtful interview. Thanks so much to all of you for watching and supporting us all here at BIMA. We really couldn't do any of this without you. Thank you.